Welcome to adapting class. Let's do some endless case study. I'm not going to give you any diagnosis, but we're going to work through the case study. You figure it yourself. This is the critical thinking way of case study so that when I ask you, you'll be more familiar with it rather than me giving you the point. This is a case study. You know it, you're familiar with it. You've seen it multiple times. Just pay attention to the buzzwords and then you'll be able to figure it out easily. So straightforward. Assuming you have a G1 P0, okay? She was 37 weeks, just deliver a baby. Baby boy. Nice baby boy. It was 10 pounds, right? Excellent, no problem. This one is a big baby, right? But let's change it. It's too big. They make it seven pounds. Seven pound baby. The pregnancy was uncomplicated. No issue with it, right? After the baby was born, the nurse did an assessment. So the nurse did the initial assessment. And what did she see? The lips, the hands, and the fingers are blue. That's the first thing she saw. She noticed like the baby hands and fingers are blue. So she was worried. She thought, well, this is aqua cyanosis, right? So they give the baby to the mother so that the mother will, um, will provide some warmth, hold the baby, cover the baby with the blanket and like a kangaroo touch and the mommy was touching the baby. And the, the cyanosis improved a little bit, the blueness, you know, improved a little bit. You know where I'm taking you, right? But guess what? She called a doctor. So did a physician examine the baby. And he thinks this is normal, that's fine. He just said blue baby from acrocyanosis. So he said, okay, don't worry about it. Mommy said, okay. Just give me my baby. So they were discharged home 24 hours later. So they went home. G1, P0, she's a, this is a first baby, delivered a seven pound baby, uncomplicated. Initial assessment, the kid loves and uh, hands all her blue. Nurse was worried initially, but the doctor said, don't worry. There's some improvement when the mommy touches the baby. So they said, that's fine. When they went home, so for three weeks, because she's a new baby mommy, she doesn't know. So for three weeks, this is what she saw. Every time she feeds the baby, feeding, it turns blue. When he cries, it turned blue. When he get mad, it turned blue. His lips turn blue. There's no choking episode, no choking. So no choking at all. The kid is no choking. And then there's no fruity saliva either. It's fine, there's no problem with that. There's no choking, no fruity saliva, everything is perfect. She sees that every time you feed a baby, it turns blue, it cries, it gets money, it turns blue. The kid ties so easily. That's no no why. Always feel fatigue. You're getting the clue. Always get fatigue. And sometimes you breathe very fast. 
when all this thing is happening. And she figured out something. She figured out something. She's a new mommy. She's 36 years old. I did not give you age. She's a new mommy. Every time it happens, all she does was she just hold the baby and swaddle the baby easily. And then she can see that the skin get better. Right? She said, oh, every time he does that, I'm going to swaddle him. Sometimes he give the kid pacifier, right? And the kid stops doing uh, crying. So she figured out a way to take care of the baby, but she's still worried. She said, I need to go see the doctor. The kid doesn't vomit. There's no projectile vomit, nothing like that. But every time he feed the baby, this happened. One day, he decided, she decided to just feed the baby small male at the time. And this helped. So that was her strategy. And she wrote it down. She said, well, you're not going to have a big male every day. I'm going to give you small at a time and see how you do. This is the way the board will present it in, a bunch of information. But you have to pay attention to the keywords that. It's a storytelling when they give it to you. They condense it. They will give you a bunch of buzzwords. Know which one to pick and use it as your key landmark and then to be able to make a diagnosis. This is what we call differential diagnosis. I'm giving you things about choking, saliva. You should be telling you that. I'm trying to tell you no projectile vomiting, nothing like that. That's my differential diagnosis to you. It's a kid. You should have figured out by now. So they went and saw the doctor three weeks later. And then the, the mother said, well, the baby ties easily, turns blue when I feed and when he's crying or mad. Right? And so they said, well, and then they asked, does he vomit? Does he choke? He said, no, no choking episode or anything like no projectile vomit or anything like that. There's no abdominal mass. Now they can see. Those are the keys you should be, the board will try to confuse you with. And then the doctor asks, is there anything you've been doing? He said, oh, I feed the baby small meals. I said, okay, good idea. So what did the doctor did? He took the baby. And when he listened to the baby's heart, so he listened, he had some ejection mama, right? At the left sternal border. You have to know this, right? And this is a systolic in nature. That's what the, the, the doctor had. And he said, oh, I know the problem. And he started lecturing the mother. So that's what the doctor did. Start lecturing the mother and the nurse. And this is what he said. He said, your heart is like that. This is normal heart. And it's divided into four chambers. This is the right side, and this is the left side. The refs, right side receives blood, one from the head and one from the lower portion of the body. This blood is deosinated. This is the superior vena cava. It's a big vein. This is inferior vena cava. This blood goes to the right ventricle, and your lung sits here like that. And these ventricle, right ventricle, send the blood to the heart, to the lung, and the lung retain it back. This blood become oxygenated. And that's how we get oxygenated blood into the system. The ventricle send it back to the aorta and it goes to the system. But the doctor said, your kid has a problem. He has a problem because of what? This is the problem. 
your kid heart is not shaped in a better way. So your kid heart, if this is the lung, the vessel, this pulmonary artery is too tight. Blood can still pass through, but it's too tight. It's not completely blocked, it's too tight. So we call it pulmonary stenosis. Because of the blood that there's so much blood in the ventricle, the right ventricle that it can pump the blood to the lung. So what does it do? It get bigger, he get bigger and bigger and bigger. That was his problem. He get bigger and bigger than usual. And he get enlarged. This is your right ventricular apertrophy. So RH or RVH, right ventricular apertrophy. The right ventricle is dying, is drowning. He said, I need to get rid of the blood. The ventricle said, the left ventricle said, give me the blood. I can push it out. You can't do that. You got to give it to the lung. So what did, they, what did they decide to do? We have a savior. The septum in the ventricle opens up. So you have ventricular septal defect here. You develop a ventricular septal defect here like that. There is a opening here so that the blood from the right ventricle can go to the left ventricle. So this is the left ventricle. Now receive the blood, but it's deoxygenated. And the aorta is been sitting there waiting for the blood. So you have ventricular septal defect. It's waiting for the blood. It can't get it. So what it does is you go over both the left ventricle and right ventricle. Usually the aorta is only over the left ventricle. So now we have a problem. The aorta that sits here is you cover both the right ventricle and the left ventricle. This is what we call overriding of the aorta. So that was the kid's problem. So the blood that this is sending out is deoxygenated. So we have pulmonary artery stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, ventricular septal defect, and overriding of the aorta so that the heart can send blood into the system. And this is the kid's problem. This is the pathophysiology of why the baby is getting blue. And the mommy said, oh, I know why. Oh, that's why it's turning blue. So if they ask you what is the problem, pulmonary artery stenosis leading to right ventricular hypertrophy. Then we have ventricular septal defect to send the blood to the left ventricle by the aorta override both the ventricles and he send this deoxygenated blood into the system and the kid turned blue. So what did the doctor say? So this is why your kid is turning blue. This is why. And therefore your symptoms is going to get tired easily. He's going to have some deep near, right? And then it becomes cyanotic because the blood that is coming out is deoxygenated. It's going to turn blue. In order not to let him turn blue, you got to keep him quiet. Why? Every time he eats, there is too much sympathetic. So you have central cyanosis. And there is overstimulation of the sympathetic system such that when the kid cry, is a problem, exertion. Every time the kid is mad, every time he exerts himself, the sympathetic system ramp up and that lead to too much shunt. 
the shunting, the diagram I draw, the ventricles sh shunt the blood out quickly to the system. And what happens is you turn blue. So when you cry, you're going to turn blue. When you feed them, a kid, feeding is going to turn blue. When you cry, it's going to turn blue. When you get mad, you turn blue. So do prevent this from happening and the kid will be fine. What else did the doctor look at? He looked at the kid's fingers. What do you think the doctor is going to see? What do you think the doctor is going to see? He looked at the kid's fingers and he saw what? Severe hypoxia. And what do you call it? Clubbing of the fingers. And that's what the doctor saw. Then he decided to order some labs. What do you think he's going to see? He ordered some CBC. And what do you see? Elevated RBC. Elevated. RBC. If you're, you have severe hypoxia and your RBC is elevated, what happened? Polycythemia vera. So the doctor said, well, we have to worry about this. If I see polycythemia vera in this patient, I'm worried about one thing. That means the blood is too viscous. If the blood is too viscous, your B-sharp moment, I call it B-sharp. But you have one second and you say, who do you see this problem with polycythemia vera? Because of what? You're going to get stroke. Because the blood is too thick. So that's what you saw in the lab work. So he ordered some echo and you saw all the features I've described to you. That's the way you, you do that. Uh, can you find this problem? Autism while the baby is inside the mother or after the baby is born. This is what the kid have. Key facts. Don't forget this. This is a form of what? Is a right to left shunt, right to left shunt. The major problem is cyanosis at birth. And when you feed them feeding, they become what? Cyanotic. The board is going to confuse you with this left to right shunt. What are they going to say? If you feeding somebody with the left to right shunt, they're going to be diaphoretic. It's different from cyanosis. Don't let them trap you. Don't let them take this point from you. Left to right will always produce diaphoretic. They sweat because of the exertion. But if you have right to left, you're going to turn blue. There's a difference between them and don't let them trap you with that. Right to left shunt feeding becomes cyanotic. These people become right, left to right become what? Diaphoretic because they have some oxygenated blood, but it's um, the, the exertion problem and they lead to uh, becoming diaphoretic. So don't confuse the two. Now we know the problem. The mommy said, hey doctor, you're talking too much. What can I do? I've been doing something at home already. I make the baby, what do I do? I swallow the kid when he, and I feed the kid goods. Small man at a time. I need you to help me to take care of the baby. So what do you think the doctor is going to say? This is the next intervention. It's the same thing they ask you, they say teaching, right? 
is the teaching you provide. This is the education you provide. Guess what? This is a select or apply question. It's not that hard. It's something concept, you know. The mommy already is doing it. And so you should be able to figure out how to help the mommy. Teaching, education, intervention, in a six, day, six case form, they're going to ask you the same thing. So what do you think we should do? Let me, doctor said, just put the kid on the knee to chest position. If you can do that, swaddle them. Okay, it's the same thing because he's young. When you grow up, okay, when he grows up, I want you to teach him to squat. That's all. They do the same thing. They do the same thing. Swaddle the kid, squat, or knee to chest position. If you're crying, suit him. Okay, just give him some pacifier, prevent him from crying. Okay, prevent him from crying. Let him suck on something, you know? These are all things you can do. If he's sleeping, keep him sleeping. And make sure nobody disturb him. He's quiet as much as possible. So provide quiet uh, environment or uh, basically, yeah, quiet environment. Less disturbances as much as possible. Sometimes there's another strategy. I want him, I want you to wear, let him wear a blanket, you know, put a blanket and, um, and coat on it, you know, just let him wear something tight so that he can warm him so that he does not worry about it and cry and cry and cry. And continue feeding the kids small meal at the time. These are your selected apply the board try to ask you teaching and it's just nothing that you already know, right? It just, they put it together. So they will change it. They said, they will tell you, provide noisy environments. No, we got to make the kid calm as much as possible. When he's crying, he's about to cry, I want you to intervene. If you see him about to cry, intervene as much as possible. Don't let him cry, because if you cry, we're going to have a problem. And that is the key. That is the key I want you to do when you it happen. If you've done all this thing, if you've done all this thing and he's in a hospital, this is what I will ask the nurse to do. That's what the doctor said. What will the nurse do? I've done all this thing. I swallowed the kid. We put blanket on it. We provide small meal. We provide quiet environment. And still he's turning blue. Still we have a blue baby, blue baby. This we call what? The text spell, right? It's the same thing you hear the word hypocyanotic spells. So we've done everything and the kid is still having hypocyanotic spell. Help me out. The, and the doctor said, this is what we're going to do in the hospital. You won't be able to do that but this is what we will do, okay? If the kid is having the same problem, what do you think we will do? What we will do in the hospital is simple intervention. Don't forget about it. It's like what we do with any other patient. Remember, the kid is cyanotic, is having too much chance, and he's producing a lot of these oxygenated blood in the system. So we have to help the baby. So we've tried everything still with hypocyanotic spell. What we're going to do is give the kid oxygen. Don't forget it. Number two, oxygen. Give the kid oxygen. Okay. 
if oxygen does not help, we give you IV fluid to in improve the cardiac output. If none work, morphine. If we forget morphine, we give morphine to myocardial infarction, yeah. This is going to decrease the preload and improve and decrease the, it relaxes the kid too. Decrease preload and relaxes the kid and prevent the hyperkinetic uh, uh, synodic spell. These are part of your management. After you do this and still the kid is, after you've done all this thing, oxygen, next step, IV fluid, and then provide some morphine that will decrease the synodic um, they make the kid less stressful, calm them down, and help with that, and decrease the preload. So, almost done with my story. I don't want you to guys to forget it. That's why I'm making it a story form. Now, this is what happened. The kid is in the hospital, right? We're waiting. Everything is fine. He said, okay, we will, we will need surgery. The doctor said, hey, when, when you see this happening, you got to call me. The kid has not had surgery yet. Which of this is a priority? When you see this, in this particular problem, I need you to call me, you the nurse. I need you to call me as soon as possible. What are features of this problem? When you see it, call me while we're waiting for surgery. The key aspect is all based on pathophysiology. You know, you know, you know that this is the heart, this is the lung. There is nothing going to the lung. Everything is all going out and shunting the oxygenated blood out. And the right ventricle is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What is your priority for somebody who has this problem and has not had surgery here? Your key problem your, uh, is heart failure. You're looking for signs of heart failure. And so when you see periobital, edema, I need you to call me as soon as possible. That means he has heart failure. Periorbital edema is he has half heart failure. When he becomes diaphoretic with feeding, it used to be what? Cyanotic with feeding. So cyanotic with feeding is okay for this problem. But when they have diaphoretic with feeding, they are in heart failure. The right heart is in trouble now. So pay attention. When you see weight gain, yes, it's bad in these people if they have not had surgery already. Weight gain is a problem. When they look what? Pale or their skin look cold extremities. Yeah, that's, they cannot pump anything anymore. So these are features, you don't let them confuse you. When you see this, this become a problem. These features are normal. It's an expected finding. This, I don't expect it in the, this kind of problem. And so that's your issue. Periorbital edema, diaphoretic in feeding, weight gain, the skin is very cool. That means their cardiac output has dropped to the point. And then you have to worry about it. What is the kid need? We got to fix it. We need surgery. So, Surgery is key. Keyword, after surgery, you have to worry about something. What you, should you worry about? We fixed the kid, right? We fixed the kid, everything is perfect, everybody high five. What should you worry about post-surgery in this particular problem? What should you worry about? It's one thing that you worry about. And what is that? Heart failure. If you read, they will tell you right ventricle, uh, right heart failure. But they may they also may have features of forward flow. 
what I mean is most of the symptoms will be had right at failure, but they can have low urine output. Their blood pressure will go down. Okay, those are all signs of uh, what? Uh, forward flow. That's the part of the, the ventricular function. But they will have most of these symptoms will be what? Right heart failure. And you know that. I don't have to teach you heart failure. You know what is right heart failure based on this. This is receiving blood from what? This is to the head, and this is the lower portion of it. And the best way to think about heart failure, if you never watch my video, I just make it easy. It's, it's not hard. And this is a bonus question in your board when you see it. This is the vent um, right ventricle receiving superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. This inferior vena cava is receiving blood from the legs. There's a bunch of things that send their blood. The spleen sends its blood to the liver. The liver is the big organ that sends the blood to the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava receives blood from the leg that join everything to the portal system and then to the rest of it. So this is your leg. So everything, whoever is giving the blood to the ventricle, the, the inferior vena cava, we said, take your blood back. So inferior vena cava said, first the right ventricle said, I need you to take your blood back to whoever gave it to you. Then inferior vena cava said, well, you deliver, I'll take your blood. So what do you get? The liver get what? Bigger. You get what? Hepatomegaly. Big liver. The spleen, the liver has said, you spleen, take your blood back. Everybody become bigger. Spleen, megaly. Your leg, which also has blood sending up, the, the IVC said, you, the leg, take your blood. So I call it lega megaly. Your leg also get bigger, okay? It's just everything get bigger. So that means there's no lega megaly but that's edema of your leg. The spleen get bigger, your what? Your liver get bigger, you develop ascites. If you look at your head, the same thing. Your face get bigger, periobital edema. You get headache, you gain weight in the system. You don't have to memorize features of right heart failure. That's what I've given you. It's what? Systemic Conjection. You see, I never mention any pulmonary symptoms because it's not right at failure. So for this kid, when you operate on them, after that, worry about what? Uh, right at failure and a little bit of forward flow. And this is the kid problem. The nurse was worried from the beginning and the doctor should have been very observant. The doctor was not sharp that the blue baby as this problem. What does he have? This is the problem. This is how you can master this NCLEIS case study. If they give it to you, I bet you all these things I've talked about, it has to be part of the CISK case study. Take care of yourself and have a good Sunday. You guys, been, you'll be fine. All the best of luck. Bye-bye.